All right, let's continue to create our first Spark application. Now here's the outline for this video. We are going, we are going to download uh, some example data from Kaggle.com, um, some stock data, then instantiate a Spark session, the central entry point to a self-contained um, Spark application that we can run on our local machine. And then we are going to read this CSV file that we have exported from Kaggle.com um, as a CSV for, from a CSV format um, by providing some options. And we will call our first action, which is going to be show. That's going to print the first 20 lines in the data frame that we have created. And then we will finally execute our um, jar or our Spark application from within our IDE. And therefore we will have to provide a JVM option. All right, if you go to Google and uh, type in Kaggle stock market data set, you will easily end up at this page where someone has created or is exporting data from Yahoo Finance and creates um, CSV files for us to use in our projects. And as this is a quite yeah, large data set, I would like to download only one specific stock um, as a CSV file. And I will choose something with A because it's up here. Um, there's Apple, for example. So that's only one a CSV file containing only the data for one stock. Uh, this is the um, short number of Apple. And we can download only this file by pressing this button here. And then we'll download this file zipped to my machine. And I will unzip this file now and move it into our project directory. So I need a new terminal window and then I can say I will go into the downloads folder and unzip uh, this file at this place and then move this file to our um, for me it's professional workspace and then to our project directory spark video course. Then we can move to our IDE and then create a new directory here which we are going to call data. And then we move this file here into the data directory. All right, now we have some example data in our project. And now the next part on our agenda is to instantiate a Spark session, which is the central entry point into the Spark world from our Scala application. So I will go to the main.scala, which um, provides the main method that's what we can execute in the JVM later. And what we want to do here is not say hello world, but rather we want to instantiate a Spark session. And now I can type Spark session and the IDE will recognize that this can be imported from one of the libraries that we have imported in the SPT um, dot build file. And if I hit alt enter now, it adds the import. So the Spark session has a builder um, which we can use to instantiate a new Spark session or retrieve it once it has been created before. We have to provide uh, two arguments, which is app name, which is a string that you choose by yourself um, to identify your application. So we will call we could we will call it um, Spark Video Course, and then we also have to set the master. And as we want to run our application locally on our machine we will use the standalone uh, local mode. So we say uh, local, local, and in brackets and asterisk, which will tell Spark to instantiate a local Spark session with the number of executors as we have cores available on our machine. So these are the required arguments for any instantiation of a Spark session. And now we can say uh, get or create, which will retrieve the final Spark session. Now we should also save a reference to this, which we are going to call Spark and save a reference to our Spark session so that we can use it later in the program. Now as Spark is, or the Spark session is the central entry point, we can use it to read data from various data sources. Therefore we say Spark dot read, which will give us a data frame reader. 
and the reader has uh, various fi uh, supports various file formats. One is ZSV, which we are going to need. And as the IDE tells us now here, um, it takes one or many string paths as arguments. And here we are just going to put in a relative path uh, starting from our project root directory. So we have put our data, our ZSV file into data and then appl.csv. All right, so that's what we need to load um, a CSV file with Spark. Now this read actually ret returns something called a data frame, and we should save a reference to this data frame in our program so that we can reference it later. So I will call it simply df. So we have a value df, which will hold a data frame because this CSV reader returns a data frame. And on this data frame, we can call an action um, which is called show. And the show action actually prints the first 20 lines per default out to the console. Now I want to show you something different. So all of that I have known because I've used it many times before, but we can look at all of this up in the Spark documentation as well. So I uh, opened the um, root page of uh, spark.apache.org and here we can find also documentation for the latest release. And here we can also find API docs. So what we're doing is we use the SQL API of Spark and we are using Scala. So I will open the Scala API docs. And here you can see the package org.apache.spark that's the one we have imported into our project and we are using SQL. So on the right side, you can see all the um, child packages of Spark and one being SQL. Now, if you look back into the code, we can see that the Spark session is part of the SQL package. So the, the full path of the Spark session is session. And I would like to show you exactly this in uh, this documentation here. So we went to org Apache Spark SQL. And within that, there is a Spark session down here, which is the documentation of the Spark session. Now here you can see that there is a builder. So here you also have the, um, con uh, the documentation, how to instantiate a Spark session using the builder. That's what we have used. We can also pass in some configuration, which we're going to see later as well. But what we are most interested now is the Spark session dot read, which uh, returns a data frame reader. So let's see if we can find this here. So here's the dot read. And as I said, it returns a data frame reader that can be used to read non streaming data frames. So if we resolve this in this documentation, we will jump to the data frame reader which is part of the SQL package as well. And there's, it's not no surprise that it has a ZSV method, which takes a path as input. So this is exactly what we're using in the program. Now, if we expand this documentation for the ZSV reader, we can um, yeah, read what is documented here. And also you can, it says you can find the ZSV specific options for reading, for reading ZSV files in the data source options in the version you use. So this, that's a link. So if I follow this link, it jumps basically to the programming guides for SQL. And in here you have a documentation for the data sources available. So we are using the ZSV data source and it has jumped already to the ZSV uh, data source uh, documentation here. And here we can see what options we can pass into the ZSV um, reader. For example, we could pass in the option called header and the default is false. So Spark wouldn't expect the ZSV uh, file to have a header. But if we have a ZSV file having a header, we can pass in header um, with a value of true. And that's what we're going to do. Because if we look at our data, so that's called apple.csv. we can see it has a header specifying the column names. So therefore, if we just executed a code like this, 
it would interpret the first line in the CSV file as actual data. So the um, column names would end up being data in our data frame. Rather, we use the option, com uh, the option um, function here and say, we want to pass in a uh, an option called header and we want to give it the value true. And now the uh, IDE also suggests me to name Boolean arguments, which I will do. So the value should be true. And now we are reading the CSV file with the column name names being picked up from the first line in the CSV file. Now the next step would be to execute this code. And we want simply to run this uh, main method. So what I can do here in my IDE is to simply hit the uh, play button here and select run this main method. And it will create a run configuration for me which you can also, for example, um, execute from the command line, but it's much easier to do it like this. So it sets the working directory to be the right one. It also selects the um, JDK version or SDK version to be Java 17, as we have specified in the project settings. And it will also put in which module we would like to execute. All right, so now it's building the project and running our application. Now what we can see here now is a failure which you may um, which you may experience on your machine as well. So it's it's trying to start um, the Spark in standalone mode, and what it needs to do is basically to bind to a port on the on the host machine, and it says here that it cannot bind to a random free port. So if we look further in the error message here, it says on the Spark driver, it failed 16 times or to bind on a random free port. And we could consider explicitly uh, setting the binding address for the Spark driver. And um, for example, using spark.driver.bind address in our configuration. Now we haven't worry about, worried about configuration at all by now, but we can set this configuration such that Spark knows which bind address to use. This usually happens when it cannot resolve the host name that your computer has to the local host address. So during the instantiation of the Spark session, we can add also configuration by calling config. And the config we want to use is Spark driver bind address. And we just want to put a value which specifies the local host IP address so that it can bind to the local host, to any local host port uh, to start this Spark driver. So if we run this again now, we experience a different error. And that's an error introduced if we use um, Java 17 with the Spark version on a standalone mode, because that is actually not publicly visible anymore. So we have to add a run configuration um, a JVM parameter to our run configuration such that this works. So we would like to add a VM option here. And I've pasted this into the outline before. So we only need it from here. So we need to add this JVM option, which is a known issue when using Java 17 and uh, Spark 3.5.0. So let's try and run again to see what happens. Now it's completed and yeah, we can see that we have some output here, which is the result of the dot show action in our program. And we can see that it has read the CSV file into a table and prints the first 20 lines onto our console. What I forgot to mention is in the run configurations, I can only show you this for IntelliJ, but we can edit this configurations as we've seen before. Now we have added this JVM um, arguments to our run configuration. But what we can also do is down here, we can edit configuration templates. So and if we uh, click here in the application, that's what we are using. We can also add this JVM option here, paste it here and save it as a template. So if I save this now, okay, and I will actually delete this one. 
So the the instance of the run configuration that it, that has been created for mo for me automatically. Um, I've deleted this one, and if I press play here on the main now, it will use the run template that we have created <coughs> to generate a new configuration. So if I look at this configuration again, first of all, we see that it's completing. And secondly, it has created a new run configuration with having the default setting already in place. Mm -hmm.